Okay, guys, uh, welcome to <clears throat> this introductory video on mechanics. This is mainly for the, uh, the Physics 1015 students. Um, and we will be working out of this textbook, um, uh, Statics by uh, Hibbler. Where is Hibbler? Hibbler is down there, and Yap. And uh, the 13th edition. Okay, so. <clears throat> in this introductory video, I just want to touch on a few important foundational topics. The first is obviously what is mechanics. So we'll just briefly touch on that. Then we want to look at the three branches of mechanics. Obviously in this course we're only dealing with one branch. But uh, we just want to give a, a basic overview of the three branches so, just so that we know where we stand. Um, with, with mechanics or with what we're doing in this course. Then, uh, uh, you know, it, one of these three branches is rigid body mechanics, and we're going to basically look at the two areas of rigid body mechanics, just uh, touch on that. And then we're going to look at something called idealizations. Okay, so this is all in uh, section 1.1 of the textbook. All right? Okay, so what is mechanics? What is mechanics? Well, essentially, mechanics is just the behavior, right? The behavior, behavior of bodies that are subjected to forces, okay? So a body, any body, it can be your calculator that's on your desk, it can be the laptop, your body, uh, it could be anything, it could be a, you know, even a structure, a building. And how does this body behave when subjected to forces? Okay? So just get this concept, just get this concept into your mind that there's a body, some, some object, some structure, something, and we have some forces acting on this body. And what do these forces do? What is the behavior? Okay? So. Uh, one of two things can happen. The first is that the body can be, and I want you to really remember this term, the body can be in equilibrium, okay, equilibrium, or motion. And really, um, you know, motion, motion can also be equilibrium, but really what we mean here is there can be some acceleration but here, um, our acceleration is, is zero. Equilibrium means our acceleration is zero. And when we say motion, we mean our acceleration is, say, is not zero. Okay? So, I'm just going to repeat. What is mechanics? It's the behavior of a body or bodies when, uh, under, this, the, under, this, um, under the application of forces. And these forces then can either cause the body to be in equilibrium, which means the acceleration is zero, okay, or it can cause the body to accelerate, okay. Now, I just want to break this down even further. Equilibrium, maybe we can write here, equilibrium means that either this body is at rest or it is moving with um, a constant velocity. Velocity is constant. Okay? I hope that's clear. Okay, so these forces are acting on the body, and if the body is in equilibrium, meaning essentially the forces cancel each other out, and the acceleration is zero, then this means either that this body is at rest, like the calculator that's on your table or your cell phone that's on, on the table, or it could be a body that's moving at a constant velocity. Okay? Then the other, the other uh, um, case is when these forces are not in equilibrium. The forces are not balanced, which means that the body will accelerate. Okay, so please take a note of these two cases, and then furthermore, see how this is broken up into rest and constant velocity. Now, in this course, 
we are doing something called statics. Okay, this is a this is what we're doing in the first semester, and statics has to do with mostly this case, where objects are not necessarily moving at a constant velocity, but are move are are at rest. Okay, so statics means the body or the particle is static; it is not moving. So please take note of that. So. So just try to recap again what's mechanics. You know, I should be able to wake you up in the middle of the night and then you can be able to say, well, mechanics is the behavior of bodies that are subjected to forces. And, and we either have equilibrium or we have uh, non-equilibrium, which is we have acceleration of the body. Okay. Now, the next thing which I'd like to touch on, I hope that's clear. The next thing I'd like to touch on is the three branches, three branches of mechanics. Okay, I'll just write that out. Three branches of mechanics. Um, what we're dealing with in this course is rigid body, rigid body mechanics, but we also get deformable, deformable body, and let me just stick it in here. We also get fluid Mechanics. Okay, so rigid body, deformable, and fluid mechanics. In this course, we're, we're mainly dealing with rigid body. And then in the following courses, if you're a mechanical, if you're a civil engineer, uh, I'm not sure any others, you'll deal with deformable body, which is also, say, solid mechanics, or mechanics of materials, or strength of materials. Those are all names for, for this course. And then we will have fluid mechanics. Okay, so why do we call it rigid body? Because in this introductory course, we are assuming that a body, under the, under the subjection of forces, okay, if you apply a bunch of forces to a body, when we are discussing, when we are, I guess it's, a, it's an assumption, an idealization uh, of when we use rigid body mechanics, we are saying that if we apply forces to an object, the object or the body does not deform. Okay? This means that we are not looking at what's happening on the inside of the body. We are mainly concerned with the external effects. Okay? The external effects. So, you know, if you take your ruler and you bend it, it's deforming, right? But in rigid body mechanics, we do not, we assume that um, the body that we are, we are studying does not uh, deform at all. Because it doesn't deform, there are no internal stresses that are acting in the body. And so all we need to do is study the external effects. Another thing we need to pick up is that how do we, you know, how do we know if it's a, a rigid body? Well, basically, if we take two points here, right, and we measure the distance between these two points, and we apply some forces, the distance between these two forces, ah, uh, sorry, between these two points remains the same. That is a rigid body. Deformable me body mechanics, okay, we do look at the deformation, and because we look at deformation, we look also at the internal stresses that develop within the body due to the forces. Okay, then fluid mechanics is simply uh, the study of uh, liquids and gases that are subjected to forces. Okay, but that's a more advanced topic. More advanced topic. This is a the fundamental, um, the really the basis for the rest of of the study of mechanics. So please understand what is rigid body. Okay, rigid body mechanics. Um, yes. Okay. So now the two areas, two areas of of rigid body, rigid body mechanics. The two areas we've already touched on it earlier. Okay, where we spoke about the equilibrium, and really the acceleration is zero, and where the acceleration is not zero. Um, the two areas of rigid body mechanics, like we've I've spoken about earlier, are statics and dynamics okay so statics again please remember this word equilibrium 
all the forces are in equilibrium. The body is in equilibrium. But specifically with statics, we focus on the body being at rest. Okay? We can apply it to a body that's moving with a constant velocity, but we focus on really problems that where the, where the body is at rest. Then dynamics, um, it's non-equilibrium, so we do have an acceleration. Okay? We have an acceleration of the body. Okay, but this statics we will deal with in the first semester, this and dynamics we will deal with in the second semester. Okay, so those are the two areas of rigid body mechanics. Rigid body mechanics, the statics, right, and dynamics. And finally, the last thing that I'd like to just briefly discuss are idealizations. Okay? I've already discussed an idealization, which is very important, which is rigid body. Okay? Right, no body, <laughs> no body, well, that's right, no body is actually rigid. Right? All bodies deform. But if we say if we're dealing with steel, or we're dealing with some solid wood, or you know some kind of material where we apply some forces, but the body hardly deforms, then we can assume we can assume that it's rigid. Okay, just like I defined it earlier. So, yeah. So the next idealization which I'd like to touch on, uh, which is in page page five of your textbook, is a particle. Guys, this is very important that we understand what is a particle, and actually. Now that we have it here, um, this, this textbook studies two different things, so to speak. The one is a body and the one is a particle. And if you, if you look at, I know this is going a bit ahead, but if you look at chapter 3, let me just get to chapter 3. Right, it says equilibrium of a particle. Okay, please take note of the word particle. Take note of the word equilibrium. Particle, okay. Then if you go to chapter 5, it says equilibrium of a rigid body, okay? Equilibrium of a particle, equilibrium of a rigid body. So both are equilibrium, but the one is of a particle and the other one is of a body, and specifically a rigid body. So please take note that we are looking at bodies and particles in this, in this course. What is a particle? Particle is, is simply is a body, but it has mass, but it has no size. So what does this mean? Well, maybe this is a bit early to understand this, but just just you know, just maybe begin to understand it, is that we assume whatever body we're dealing with, whether it's a car, whether it's earth, whether it's a calculator, whether it's a pen, whether it's a beam, whatever it is, we are assuming relative to the environment that its size is negligible. I'm sorry, I wrote the particle has mass and size. No, a particle has mass, but no size. It has no size. So, so when we deal with a particle, um, please take note of this, we are only interested in its translational motion, meaning straight line. Okay, moves there, moves there. We are only interested in translational movement because it doesn't have any, any it doesn't have a body, right? So, okay, what does that mean? If we're looking at a body, say there's a body. With a body, we are concerned with both translational, okay, as well as rotational. Translational and rotational. Whereas for a particle, we, are, we only has mass, no size. We are only concerned with translational motion. With a body, translation and rotation. But we'll get to that later on. But please just lay the, the basic foundation, okay? The difference between a, a body and a particle. So a particle is an idealization, meaning that if the, if the body is so small compared to its surroundings, like, for example, the Earth and its orbit, okay? Sorry, that's a terrible orbit. But the Earth, a 
is so small compared to its, its orbit that we can assume that it is a particle. So we don't look at its rotational properties. We don't look at anything rotational. We only look at translational. Okay, guys? So you, we'll get there, but just please understand that. Then the last one, quickly, is what is the last idealization? Is a, a concentrated, concentrated force. Okay, so um, a concentrated force is just if a force is applied to a, a single point, okay, in real life, forces are actually distributed. Distributed. In real life, forces are distributed. So if you apply your thumb onto the table, then you know that it's actually a distributed load. It's a force that's being applied over a, an area. Okay, but an idealization which uh, we make use of in this chapter and, and the next few chapters is something called a concentrated force. In the much later chapters, we will look at distributed forces. So please take note of the difference between concentrated force and distributed force. Okay, uh, I think that ends our introductory video. Um, yes, thank you.